box truck that I'm converting into a a motor home. Uh, hang on a sec. Self version, can I help you? Hi. The reason I was calling is um, I'm, I'm converting a, a box truck into a motorhome and I was told you guys can help me with um, answering a few questions as far as what, what are the minimum requirements that I need to convert it into a, uh, into a motorhome. That's the, that's the DMV question. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. So you'll have to ask them what they, what they want. Got it. Okay. I'll give them a call then. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Bye. Um, what I'm looking for is actual literature or um, the actual the vehicle code that have all of these statements. You know, just to avoid all of the guesswork, and you know, just to be more transparent about what is actually needed. What is the actual minimum requirement? So, you know, that's what I'm seeking. So I'm still on hold, waiting for the DMV to call me back. I'm converting a box truck. Um, it, you know, it's a formal U-Haul type vehicle, and I'm converting that into a motorhome to re-register it. Okay. Um, yeah, we have to do some research on that. Is there any like liter literature or anything that I should look at? Is there any like literature or an actual vehicle code that states states these um these items that are needed? Yeah, there is. Let um, me just figure out where. Just change the body, change the All right. Um, so I am seeing one small section here. Okay. Under, um, it's chapter 2.150. 2. Point original registration. 2.150, recreational vehicles. Recreational vehicle is a motorhome. Right. House car, travel trailer, truck camper. Uh, with or without motive power designed for human habitation or other occupancy, built on a single chassis and self propelled uh, truck mounted or permanently mobile on the highways. They must contain less than 320 square feet of internal living room area, excluding built in equipment and including but not limited to wardrobe, closets, cabinets, kitchen units, fixtures and bath and toilet rooms and 400 square feet or less of gross area measured at maximum horizontal projection. Um, okay, motor homes and then if you go farther down, there's a, a bullet point, motor homes, um, where it goes into greater detail. Motor homes must contain permanently installed independent life support systems which criteria of the American National Standard Institute, ANSI, and provide at least four of the following facilities. Cooking, refrigeration or ice box, self-contained toilet, heating and or air conditioning, a portable water supply system, including a faucet and sink, a separate 110 to 125 volt electrical power supply, and or liquid petroleum gas supply. So that's in section 2.150. Trying to go online and see if I can find it so I can kind of read with you of what you're, what you're saying. Uh, chapter 2.150 um, motorhome or just, here I'll Google just that. It's, uh, yeah, chapter 2.150 in the registration manual and that section is called recreational vehicles. Um, let me see if I can find it online so that you can look at it yourself. I don't know if the vehicle registration manual is available online. I think there's a, I think there's like a vehicle industry version. Oh, I see. Here. Yeah, so that's with no results. I can look on the internet. So let's try. Um, so it sounds uh, like a lengthy requirement. I mean, I hate to, hate to try, try to write everything down. If I can just see it somewhere online and... No, yeah, definitely. I wanted to help you find it. Oh, your thank version you. online. Here. Thank you. There's got to be a spot. The, the chapter that you had, um, that you were reading off, where, um, where did you get that information? Just from your database? Yeah, that's what we have. Um, oh, I see. <clears throat> what we get to read from the vehicle registration manual. Oh, I got you. Thank you.
what do you think the next best way to kind of get that full full um, literature of what you what you had uh, read earlier? I don't know, can you can you email it? Can you email me a copy of that. I wish I could. Um, I don't have the email. Oh. <laughs> um, you might be able to print that section out for you at a DMV. Um, let's see. Hold on. Oh, like go into an actual DMV office. Recreational vehicles and trailers handbook. That seems to be the only thing that's coming up on the website. Yes, I did see that. It's it's more like did a. You see that? Yeah, it's more like a, just general information of, you know, the lights and headlights and stuff like that. What I like to know is, like, what are the the actual items that need to be installed in order to, you know, convert it. None of that talks about convert the conversion methods or the items needed to be installed for a conversion. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can give it to you again if you want to write it down. Okay, how many how many items is it? I'll write it down. So just want to run that by me one more time. Of course. Um, yeah, it says a motorhome vehicle designed to provide temporary living quarters as built in as an integral part of, permanently attached to, so propelled motor vehicle chassis or van that includes a motorhome van manufactured by a licensed motorhome manufacturer. Um, human habitation is defined as living space, which includes, but is not limited to, closets, cabinets, kitchen units or fixtures, and bath or toilet rooms. Okay. That's it. Yeah, and then it goes into like greater detail, which says um, motorhomes must contain permanently installed independent life support systems, which meet the criteria of the ANSI, American National Standard Institute, and provide at least four of the following facilities. There's cooking, refrigeration or icebox, self-contained toilet, heating and or air. Got it. Uh, portable water supply, including faucet and sink. A separate 110 to 125 volt electrical power supply or a liquid petroleum gas supply. No. Does it say anything about um, installing, having to have like a window or having to have a, a fire extinguisher, a door that swings in or out? I'm not seeing that part. Um, How long is the literature you're talking about? Maybe I should go down to the DMV and have it, have them print it out for me. Yeah, that's, that's what I think would be the best bet. Bam, modified for human habitation. To convert from commercial to auto license plates, the applicant must submit the title. Uh, Reg 256A form, which is a um, miscellaneous certification, certification of vehicle for human habitation section, statement of facts form stating the vehicle has been changed or altered to meet the definition, then you have to turn in the commercial license plates to the vehicle, and taking the vehicle in, having somebody look at it, kind of see what it is that you're trying to do, then they can get you the right um, information. The, the DMV websites and just didn't find any any actual literature on on, on what you're talking about. So if I go down I to know, the I think it's because we have a lot of internal internal literature and, and brochures, things that have facts. Gotcha. For people that are doing things like this, I don't have those here with me. Uh -huh. um, but I think if the office could look at the vehicle, uh, you could tell them what it is that you're trying to do, and they can let you know if it's an actual the conversion, which it sounds like to me, or if it's going to be like, uh, um, they're doing like special equipment. Right, right. Or special construction. So if I go down to the DMV and then just and mention to them if they can print out to me the, the chapter 72.150, that's all, that's pretty much, um, they'll know exactly what, what I'm talking about and they'll print me that Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, I might just I might just do that. Yeah, because I know it, it sounds like there's a lot of um, content just just for that, you know, just for like a conversion like that. And uh, and and you know, I've been searching the the. There's a bunch of sites and blogs and people talking about it, but nothing concrete that I can actually work from. I do it right and make sure everything's up to DMV standard, pretty much. All right. Yeah, because I don't think you're doing a special construction because the vehicle isn't like being built from scratch itself. You're, the vehicle's there. You're just making it a uh, livable space. Right. Just pretty, mu pretty much what you're saying, just in kind of installing the bed and a little refrigerator and stuff like that. And uh, But it has yeah. to be, I know it has to be like bolted down. I can't just stick in a mattress in a, in a fridge and right. just... <laughs> So, you know, there's... Yeah, I don't have that that kind of a detailed information in front of me here. And unfortunately, I'm not sure where to get that. So they must have something there. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe the CHP might have something like that as well. Oh, I, ju I just got off the phone with them. They're like, nope, it's a DMV matter. I'm like, okay. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, right. it's 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 a, it sounds like it's a very um a very unique circumstance. Or the um that ANSI that I was mentioning. It yeah, like it has to meet those requirements. Yeah, I'll check out their their site. Maybe I'll find something there. American National Standards Institute. Dot, That's it. Dot yeah. Org. Yes, mm. that might be maybe a good place to look. Motor home conversion requirements. How are they tied in with the DMV? I have no idea. I think it's, <laughs> it's probably needs to be certified by them to be like a valid, you know, motor home, something that can be sold, it's like a certification. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, literature to go through, but yeah, I, I think I'll take your advice and just, you know, I, I, you gave me a good uh, starting point as far as uh, the chapter 2.150. And, you know. Yeah, take it in for a vehicle verification, and they can tell you, they can give you information on exactly what would need to be done to convert it. Right, because I'm pretty sure they're going to have to um, uh, refer to it, you know, if I take it into the DMV. And All right, well, it's a good start. Um, I do appreciate, yeah. uh, you know, just taking your time and looking for it. I really appreciate it. it it's of course. like I said. I've been trying to like. I, I really want to make sure I do this right, and I want to make sure that you know I'm not just guessing, because because a lot of it, you know, it's, like I said, there's a lot of people online that are are providing information, and, and I'm pretty sure it's not. They're not too off from the truth, but you know, it's it's different from actually seeing an actual um, you know code or literature from the actual DMV or risking not do, yeah. having doing it right. Yeah. So thank you so much for your for your help. I really I really appreciate it. So um, yeah, my pleasure. Well, I got a good good start here with the with the chapter. So okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Okay. You Thanks. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Just going down to the DMV was not my idea, but for you guys, I will make the exception. I will go down to the DMV and see if I can get some actual literature for this. And and again, there's a lot of literature online right now as it is, but it's it's nothing concrete to 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 support the actual um, claims that I'm making or that everyone else is making online. And I really would like to provide that actual concrete. Um, information to just kind of support what what I'm saying what everybody else is saying you know this is just a lot of it's a lot of information to try to guess the actual components that actually need to be in there so I'm gonna go down to the DMV and see if I can get them to print me out this chapter or, or get some actual literature for this stuff so I hate the DMV to the DMV at the, you know, the corporate um, headquarters and they said okay. that I can only get this this printout here at the DMV with you guys. Um, What's that? This is uh, chapter 2.150. It's um, regarding uh, the requirements to to convert a, a box truck into a motorhome or a convert, a, convert a vehicle into a motorhome, like another type of vehicle. Yeah, this vehicle here. 
No, it's not. I haven't started it. I, I just want to know if, you, if I can get like a printout of the requirements so that I know how to how so to. So the printout is simple. It's you're talking about a box truck. You're going to convert it into a vehicle that's fit for human habitation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So commercial to auto. Well, but this does a. So when they inspect it. Right. This will designate the body type. If it's a motorhome. Right. Then the body type change will be the motorhome. My my um. No. Okay. I'm listening. Hang on, sorry. Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> no, so I guess the the, the um, questions that I have is what exa what are what exactly items do I need to imp imply into the motorhome? Does it need a bathroom? And do you have so litter? So, human habitation, bed, sink. So, just is it bed, it sink? Uh, what is it? Bed, sink. Um, bed, sink. Is it Kitchenette? like Kitchenette? You can have motorhomes have kitchen. Is it like in, up to like an interpretation to you know whatever? No, I, when they, I mean, when you walk in, you see a motorhome. Right. You can see it's it's fit for human habitation. Right. There's a place to sleep. Right. It has a sink. Well, there's a there's a place to eat right 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 well my question is is you know I, I would like to see if i can actually get actual literature learned so she said if you guys can just print it out the 2.150 chapter that's it, the vehicle it, it, code book if you want to buy that you can't um we don't we sell the vehicle code book we don't print that out i see um we used to have free ones the older ones they're all gone so is there like actual Online, literature if you go to the dmv website they, yeah, I went to the DMV website and so they said it's not. Look, you can look up the vehicle code book. It's, it, it's yeah, online. well, she said it's, it's not a vehicle. She said it's a chapter. Uh, this is this is directly came directly from the. Um, so still a chapter from our from our from registration D manual. Yes. We don't give out our registration manual. Um, we can we can give you verbally so, information. Right. So but we're what, not going to print anything she, from our registration manual. She gave to you on that on the date. And what we're changing the body type to, what it is now, right. what it's going to, and the body. Okay. So it would be your title for the vehicle, the plates, because we're giving you new plates. You would bring the title, the plates, the vehicle for the verification, for okay. us to verify it, change the body type, and then this form you're telling us the cost and so on. Right, right. Um, he didn't, he didn't know. So it's, you're, you're under, you're under 10,000, it's not going to change. That's oh, okay. what it is. That's I believe. Let me see. Hang on. Yeah. So that's the weight fee. I see. So when you change it, you're going to save quite a bit of money on the weight fee. Right. $257 is the weight fee. Right. A, but you're that. under $10,000. you are not paying the CBR fees. So there are commercial fees you pay when you're over $10,000. Right now we have you at under ten thousand. Gotcha. So I got once it's you're, converted you're, to RV, then it's good, the the rating's gonna change. RV to auto, uh, those weight fees. Got it. Good to know. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. So just as I suspected, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you suspected as well, that the, a visit to the DMV was not going to be helpful at all. Um, you know, the guy pretty much didn't really give me any type of help. Um, he wasn't. Uh, uh, very clear or transparent as to what you know what I was asking for you know it seems like you know he he didn't even want to go and check his his manual that supposedly they 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 go by um, and you know he, it's whole it's like a holy grail that they don't they don't let anyone touch it or even look at it um, so it's kind of odd to me that you know this information is not available um, readily available to the public um, I don't know why so um, all the next thing that I can do is try to see if I can get a hold of somebody at the NSAI to to see if um, they can better guide me as to what what their requirements are because apparently the lady at the the DMV lady uh, the headquarters you know she did kind of um, there was a section there that the improvements had to meet the ANSI um, standards so I don't know what those are you know they just say well they have to meet those standards which you know, I, I would like, um, you know, a list of what those standards are, you know, full disclosure of what they are. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get a hold of somebody there. You know, I've tried to go online and, you know, visiting their their website, um, ANSI.org, and their um, their website was very complex. It's kind of hard to, to navigate through it. So, I mean, I'm going to see if I can actually get somebody on the phone and see if they can better guide me. Thank you for calling the American National Standards Institute. If you know the extension number of the party you wish to reach, 
You may dial it at any time or press 1 for our dial by name directory. Good afternoon, American National Standards Institute. How may I help you? Hey there, how's it going? Um, I have a question for you. It's okay, yeah, I can actually transfer you to someone who can give you more information. If we, uh... How may I help you, sir? I'm uh, converting a, a box truck into a motor home, and the DMV said that I need to follow the ANSI guidelines. Okay, but which guidelines, sir? Because there are so many. Did they give you a document number or some sort of title? Uh, well, the title was um, uh, Motorhome Guidelines, I, I believe it was, and they and supposedly it was in their registration manual. Motorhome Guidelines? Okay, I don't know what manual they're talking about um, or what guideline they're talking about. Oh, um, well, here's... There are so many, there are thousands of ANSI guidelines that to narrow it down, we need to know who would have developed this because ANSI doesn't write standards. They accredit the bodies that do. So one way to narrow it down is who wrote it or maybe the document number. Right. Yeah, they didn't give me that. They're just like, it's got to uh, be according to the ANSI um, guidelines. I see what you're saying. I, I was looking online and there is just a ton of different. Um, right. I'm looking at one, but I don't know if that's what they're talking about for recreational vehicles. Well, yeah, it's for recreational vehicle. It could be for recreational vehicles. Um, it's more like a, a motorhome type. I don't. I'm not sure. You should go back and explain to them that you did call ANSI, but you found out that ANSI does not write standards. What ANSI does is they accredit the bodies that do. If they can give you the document number for the for the guideline they're referring to, we can then look for it that way. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been down to the DMV, but those people out there, they just take you for a loop around the world. Oh, oh yeah. Tell them, yeah, just tell them that you call the answer that there are thousands of guidelines. Which guideline are they talking about? Or, uh, give you a specific document number. It, it needs to be narrowed down to a specific document. I gotcha. I, I, which I understand. Right. Cause I don't know if you're familiar with Nancy's web store. Um, yeah, kind of. I'm kind of looking at it online right now, and I, I, I was... Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so you are at webstore.ansi.org? Yeah. Right, so all of these people, they write standards, <laughs> not ANSI. We accredit them. So, so that's what I'm saying. Do you know who would have written this guy like they're talking about? I, I think there is an organization called a Recreational Vehicle Something Something. There's so many, there's so many that we, we can't possibly memorize all these. Oh, I am sure. I'm looking at them yeah. and there's just so many of them. Did they, did they mention specific information? No, they did not. They're just, you know, I just told them, you know, I'm trying to find out what the guidelines. So, what, so okay, so for recreational vehicles, I know you might want to write this down and ask them if that's what they're talking about. Okay. Um, but let them give you a number first. Right. You know, tell them, because they want you to follow a guideline, tell them what's the document number for this guideline or the title for it, because ANC has so many guidelines. Tell them right. you contacted us. But usually, it's there's an A119.2 for recreational vehicles. Okay. A119.2, and that was, I believe, superseded by an a NPA 501? And NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. Uh, because the A119.2 covered fire safety guidelines for fuel systems, fire detection equipment, existing facilities, and plumbing systems, including water distribution and drainage systems on a recreational vehicle. Now you know I noticed that on the on the store these these um publications they're they're for sale. Is it, it, you know I see like fifty eight dollars, sixty two dollars, are oh yeah. So these are all for sale. You can't really just you know open up a, a file and just look at him. You gotta no. you gotta pay for them. Why why is that? Why aren't these things um of you know publicly available? Because the people that write this. Um, do a lot of research 
Um, and part of it has to do with um, the, for the ability that for them to do research, they need some type of funding. And so they need to get um, compensated for their work some way. Gotcha. It makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. I just, the guidelines that we have to follow, yet we have to pay for the information, which I'm not complaining about it. It's just kind of interesting how that works. We don't know what guideline they're talking about. Yeah, and I, they, you know, they didn't really explain to me what kind of, what specifically what guidelines. So that's exactly what I'm searching for. I mean, you know, so I thought right. that you so guys they're, would... they're the ones who want you to comply with it, so they have to give you what the document number is, and then if you call us back with that document number, we can tell you whether it's available on the web store or where you can, or if you can get it on the um, IBR portal, which is the site where standards are free of charge if they're incorporated into a government regulation. Right, which makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So thank you so much. I appreciate your help. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. No problem. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. So, you know, I'm going around the world with this thing, so <laughs> it's kind of interesting how all of this is working, so. Interesting indeed. Doesn't seem like any of this is it. So we just need to find a actual document number that we can refer to, because this stuff does not seem to be readily available at the American National Standard Institute. So it seems like uh, somebody somebody wrote this these these guidelines um, and published it onto the ANSI platform. And and uh, you know who is this person that or who is who is this person or agency or or, or organization that that created these guidelines that you know if you can reach to them that you know puts us a step closer as to what uh, what are the actual detailed um, requirements and can I get a document for that I mean I don't mind I mean if I don't mind paying for it and even if I pay for it um, I'm pretty sure since it's gonna be a copyright copywritten um, information I'm pretty sure I can't just publish it to you guys on YouTube uh, so that kind of you know leads me to believe that um, this stuff is just really not it's really not available um, it, <laughs> it doesn't exist it's like a unicorn you know it's like this mystical thing that that you know it's out there you know it's out there it, it, it exists in in the iCloud or something but you know you just can't physically touch it so you know it's not a thing that you can you know physically hold in your hand and and read it and share it with you guys and you know it's a public um, it's a public publication or public um, you know literature so it is a very interesting, very interesting circumstance here. A document. Thank you for calling the California Department of Motor Vehicles. For English, press 1. Para español, o prima 2. So you give you the backstory really, really quick, so uh, you know what... what Reader's what? Digest, preferably. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, Sounds Oh, take your time. I was just joking. Sorry. No, no, no. You're good. Hey, so what, what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to convert a box truck to a motor home, and I was trying to get the guidelines and the requirements to do so. Um, so I was going to, I guess, ask you if um, there is a, a different way where I can obtain this um, the the literature as to what what the Asian was trying to read to me earlier. And, a lot of stuff over the phone, that's the reason. That's why I said all that. Well, that's, I, I, and, and I figure that much. I figure that be, it's, there's just too much literature, so that's why I was trying to kind of find it online. And she said it's not really available no. online. Um, so, right. I mean, I don't know what else What else do you suggest I can I can do? Because they keep it 100% real, because what they want you to do is go ahead and come in for a vehicle verification so they can get it. It's a checklist that we go off of. Um, and what is that number, let me see. It's gonna be a REG 31 that will, you're converting something, so we have to 
make sure like you're like you're trying to do if what's acceptable and what's not right right exactly so because i haven't started the the, pro, uh, the the conversion yet i just i want to i want i needed something to kind of guide me so that i can so that i can comply with all the requirements that the dmv is requiring um as opposed to just you know start you know spending you know time and money into mm-hmm. it go there and then telling me no it's all wrong right that makes logical sense let me and you know so um i will try to find something as well because yeah it's very like ambiguous some of this stuff when people ask stuff like that it's like well what's the guidelines okay so sorry about that i had to pull up all of this information as far as manuals <laughs> yeah no thank you for um uh, for sorry. taking the time to do that thanks nicole there's other guidelines, and I don't know if the lady told you yesterday you spoke with um, verbatim, but it's not really that our procedures are, unfortunately, this type of stuff is not open for public consumption. So I would have to read you verbatim, basically the generalized idea of what, not generalized, basically what they're looking for and that you should be good to go as far as your, your conversion. Right. Um, and it's really kind of simplified. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, something she did, she did read it to me. You know, it's just, you know, she gave me a list. It's, you know, cooking, refrigeration or icebox, self-contained toilet. My habitation, right? Exactly. But, you know, what it is, is what I'm having a hard time um, understanding is, you know, for example, like, you know, it says cooking, refrigeration, icebox. I don't know if you see that part. But as far as an icebox, can I, you know, I just throw in a, a cooler with ice in it. Um, you know, as far as, um, it's, you know, say it's heating and or air, you know, it's just, can I just plug in a little, little fan for air? You know, it's that all falls under that bracket because it's ambi- this is what it says. And I think that that's, if, you, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, it has to be good for human, cons- you know, um, habitation. So oh. and it didn't say as- you have to have a sub zero in there. It didn't say any of that. It, say- it sounds like it's, you know, pretty much up to interpretation of, of the inspector, yeah. really, it's up to the. Is, is that what it is? Is like um, to interpretation of the inspector. Obviously, my interpretation might be different from the the inspector when I come in and, and get it inspected. I mean, if I throw a mattress on the floor, he's gonna be like, no, it's got to be, you know, a, a different type of mattress. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say it has to be specific. It does not say that at all. Right. So it's, that's what I'm saying. That's that's my question. Is you know if I you know, putting time and money into this thing and, like, you know, buy, like, a, you know, go go get one of those, um, you know, expensive mattresses and just throw it in there and be like, nope, you can't have that. It's got to be, f- you know, fastened a certain way or I don't know. I, I, this is, it's, it's not saying because I have about, uh, well, it looks like two pages worth. It's, it's just basically, it says it has to have a camper firmly attached to the body. Right. Um, and open, it has to be, uh, you know, be able to live there. Right, right, right. It, it, Which it's, 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 it sounds like it sounds like it's just common sense, in my opinion. It's just common sense, yeah, you know. Exactly. Um, uh, it, but it, 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 like you said, that it's like, well, where is that in the verb? There's nothing in the verb, sir, that says that. That's why you want to copy and write. I get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, well, you know, Nicole, the, one of the other reasons I actually um, call is because, the, you know, the lady, uh, the last time I spoke with somebody, she's, she did refer me to the ANSI, the American National Standard Institute, and she said, well, you know, a lot of the, the, the stuff that they go by is, is, is based on the American National Standard Inst- Institute um, that, um, you know, she read a... a, a paragraph um along the way that she says that um but in other words she you know she said a lot of the guidelines have to go through there so i did actually did call the ansi and and no avail what they say well they said well you know there's like thousands of different requirements for rvs you know every, anything from you know the copper wiring to you know just, you know there's different oh. um so she said unless there's a specific um Unless they have, unless the DMV have a specific guy, um, what do they call it? Yep. Um, document, document yep. number. You know, there's, if you have a document number where I can follow, so it sounds like you know. So if you don't have that, and and but you guys follow the A N S I guidelines yet? I think that she took that too far too because see, they were going a little bit over the moon with that. Over, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's no guideline in here. It's but the, but the way this is written is very. Like you just said, open interpretation, very ambiguous, where it does give you just three basic things. So if you come in, for instance, and they start talking about beds and why you have a plug, that has nothing, they're supposed to pass it through because nothing in writing says that I can't have that. Right, right. 
you know, uh, to what to what level? I mean, can I put a hammock instead of a you know? It's a, it's a bed for me. A hammock is a bed for me. Um, that's and, don't have a, you'll be able to live up in there, right? <laughs> human habitation. That's your interpretation. Of, okay, I'm gonna have a hammock instead of a full bed. All right, right. right? Exactly. That's well, we'll, we'll 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 see we'll see how that goes. I'll I'll, I'll uh, put something together, you know, um, in my little motorhome and and. And bring it in for inspection, and maybe the inspector might, you know, shine a little bit more light as to what he's looking for. I mean, is because I did see the 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 Reg 31 form, and you know, and on there, there's no, there's nothing, you know, uh, regarding um, um, campers. campers or qualification or items in, in particular, just the body type and um, you know that sort of thing. So. Uh, well, then, if, uh, if they just take down this, um, you said, if, if they ask you when you come in for the uh, verification, uh, when you talk to me, you can quote uh, 3.030 in your procedures. The girl told me this. Um, this is where you need to go look at it. If, if this person wants to be argumentative when they're looking at your camera, you should quote um, the actual section in our procedures so they can go ahead and familiarize themselves if you want that. And section of the procedure is 3.03? 3.03, it says conversion from commercial to auto. Um, yeah, conversion from commercial to auto camper. That's what it says. Uh, what is so, so what are the, if, if you don't mind me, can you, um, can, I, can you read that to me? See if I, if I can write it down and maybe I can follow I, that a little bit. As far as, and then actually you can go online with, oh, here we are, where you're looking at conversions from auto to commercial, there's a vehicle code that you can always look up on Google and, and put it in writing. That's another thing. Um, it's just giving you three basic guidelines. Pick up trucks with campers need to be firmly attached to the body type. Right. Uh, passenger type vehicles, uh, wait, where's it say, where's it say? It's like so much stuff. Sometimes I go, what analyst wrote some of these procedures? Very like, <laughs> like you said, open to interpretation instead of like get down to the point. I don't right, even know. For human, I don't basically. even know how to try to say. <laughs> it's just it's crazy. It's I don't know why they do it like that. I get what you're saying because maybe they want to be argumentative and might try to come in here with something they don't really like, so they can't stick to what it says. Sometimes that's how I think of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's open. And and like I say, you know what it is is. Ah, oh, she just hung up on me. <laughs> what the heck just happened? Oh, uh, so the lady just hung up on me. And Nicole just hung up on me. Um, yeah, it sounds like it was an accident because she was, you know, mid conversation of what she was saying. So she's probably all excited and just accidentally hung up on me. <laughs> but you know, it's. it's Pretty much just got to the you know the gist of what we're what she was saying anyhow um, you know so it it seems it does seem like it's pretty much open to to interpretation so so that's I guess that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to you know this hammock this whole hammock comment I might just do that you know I might you know I'm just going to put in a hammock uh, uh, put in a, a you know a cooler ice box. Uh, and you know, maybe throw a little fan in there, uh, a little 12 volt fan in there, and just stick my little toilet that I that I've been lugging around in there. It's, it's self-contained toilet, so um, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that and and bring it in for an inspection and be like, hey, there it is. That's it's human habitable. Like I got a place to take a dump. I got a place to take you know to sleep. Um, you know, I got a little fan air going um, I don't know maybe stick in my uh, uh, my little little propane burner you know I, I don't know I'm, I'm just gonna do the bare minimum uh, and see and see how that goes I don't know uh, I mean you know obviously I'm just gonna do it for, you know just to make the point at the at, at the DMV and just to try to get this but you know there you have it this literature this the actual literature does not exist it's like um, it's like a unicorn. It's like this mystical thing that it's, you know, 
out in the wild and you know only a few get to see you see it i don't know if even that um so this stuff just doesn't exist um it's all uh like she said it's verbatim and you know it has to be told to you you can't you can't print something out and you know take it home or you know take it with you and and build based on those guidelines you know there's no guidelines to follow you know it can only be told to you verbatim um try your best to follow stay within those guidelines and i think it's just up to interpretation i'm pretty sure that the that the inspector at the dmv his interpretation or his opinion of what a um human habitable rv might look like as opposed to my you know perspective so I don't know. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna, you know, just do the bare minimum and just, you know, stick a mattress in there or a hammock. I don't know. And just, you know, stick my little toilet in there. Maybe build a wall with cardboard and tape, duct tape it. Uh, you know, use some thumbtacks or I don't know. I'm just gonna do the bare minimum just just to see if, if, if you know what what they say. It's all very interesting to me. So there you have it, folks. That. The actual literature does not exist. So, <clears throat> hopefully, just um, the information I was able to get um, on the phone and you know pass that information to you helps. As you notice, there's uh, there's different variations of this information. The DMV lady, the first on the first call, she had um, gave me two different variations of of the requirements um there there you have it you know they they're asking me to follow these guidelines yet it's really it's you know it's it's just really open to interpretation so um you know all i can say is you know follow your gut instinct just you know you just follow your common sense um uh, but just to prove a point or just to make a point or you know or or just to see, you know, what's the bare minimum that I can get away with. I'm going to just install the bare minimum and just go down to the DMV and 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 see how that goes. I, you know, it's going to be very interesting. This is, you know, obviously it's going to be as a, you know, just a temporary thing. Obviously, that's not going to be the end of the build. You know, <laughs> I'm actually going to build an actual. Um, you know, a motorhome, it's a suitable motorhome, but um, you know, just to make the point, I'm going to, you know, throw in some just basic stuff in there and, and see how that goes. Uh, so, you know, just stick around for the next video and see how that goes. <laughs>